Hi, welcome to my very niche channel. Uh, I'm Gustav, and I talk about how it's possible protracted withdrawal sensations are a learned syndrome fueled by emotional stress. Now, I'm not a medical professional, but in my own experience, uh, withdrawal sensations can completely resolve by rejecting the concept of protracted withdrawal syndrome and instead acknowledging the role of our emotional stress in maintaining the sensations that we're feeling. Uh, so my topic today is withdrawal forms and how they can increase our stress to actually prolong withdrawal sensations. Now, when I say forums, I just mean the forums, uh, groups, organizations out there, uh, not one in particular. And just before I get into this, I'd also just say, when I first stumbled on withdrawal forums like, quite some years ago, uh, I initially felt uh, seen. You know, it was refreshing to hear criticism of psychiatry, uh, of their drugs, and some of the tapering information was uh, very useful, uh, some of it. But for me, to ultimately resolve protracted withdrawal sensations, I had to go beyond the forums because of their just significant limitations in understanding why the sensations can go on and on for some people. So here are five ways I think forums can actually perpetuate withdrawal. So when I first discovered these forums, I had no idea what was happening to me. I'd stopped psychiatric drugs months prior, yet I just kept feeling worse and worse. Now, I had, I had already disposed of the idea of psychiatric disorders. Uh, even the American Psychiatric Association admits they don't exist. But I still didn't know, you know, why I felt as sick as I did. Well, the explanation from the forums is that I had protracted withdrawal syndrome, a, a drug sickness of which I could really do very little about. Uh, time, they say, is the healer. That's their most classic line. And usually it's a lot of time. So when a terrified sort of newbie comes along, you know, I've seen it said, oh, maybe you'll heal in a year if you're a fast healer. You know, a year at best. I read this stuff and it's like, oh, this isn't good. But also, where are these forum members getting the authority to make such profoundly predictive statements on people's lives. In particular, moderators don't always inform us that protracted withdrawal syndrome is a concept, a model of reality, not necessarily reality itself, and it's certainly not necessarily our reality. Uh, this is a very key philosophical distinction, and people deserve informed consent on this to make the best decision for themselves. I mean, to tell someone on the internet that they have this dire syndrome with no proof can have a very negative effect. For instance, in both chronic pain and long COVID research, which I think uh, shares a lot of similarities with protracted withdrawal, what these studies show is that people who interpret themselves as sick when it becomes their identity, it can fuel the distressing sensations that they're feeling. Not just make them worse, but actually cause them to keep going. And when a withdrawal forum accepts this, this dire model as the truth, as their fate, it can create a toxic environment that traps people in perceived sickness. I remember when I used to just see the home pages of these forums and I would feel dread. <laughs> you know, it was a reminder that I was sick and the content of these forums is mostly people talking about very, very, very scary, you know, symptoms. You know, I have this, I have that. Do you have this? Do you have that? <laughs> you know, now sometimes documenting symptoms uh, might be necessary, uh, say, to understand a particular drug reaction. 
but it seems like all four members are kind of indiscriminately writing their own body horror novels. And moderators tell people to regularly record their symptoms, uh, maybe even score them on a scale of 1 to 10. And this encourages us to preoccupy ourselves with withdrawal sensations, to get absorbed into them. And fear cycles are created around ourselves and around the drugs. And our focus on the sensations, well, that can just take over our entire lives. Now, significantly, recent clinical trials and research have shown that what causes unwanted persistent sensations to persist is our fear and preoccupation with them. This is because it's an emotional danger signal that gets stuck on and can become the basis, the driver of the sensations over time. So when we focus on these sensations, when we think about them, write about them, uh, rank them, read about them, research them, you know, we're feeding this danger signal. We're feeding the sensations. And again, it just doesn't make them worse. It actually maintains them. Also, I might add that beneath the danger signal can oftentimes be deeper emotions, uh, something that really might be upsetting us, something we might be angry about. And this something might need to be acknowledged as well. One simple step in this general direction is maybe getting off of the forums, you know, away from the horror and the victimhood that pervades them. You know, all of this overwhelming negativity that can come off of the screen and directly into us. So forums use a biomedical model to explain protracted withdrawal sensations. That is, there's a drug injury of an unknown nature, and all we can do is wait for that unknown, mysterious injury uh, to hopefully one day heal. It's a pretty traditional medical idea. Something's broken or diseased, and you have to wait for it to heal. And this does make sense for, you know, a broken arm or a cold or even acute withdrawal. It does not always make sense uh, for non-structural chronic pain, for long COVID without tissue damage, for chronic fatigue, for perhaps protracted withdrawal sensations, just all of these persistent, mysterious things. And it doesn't make sense because biomedical uh, approaches here, they often fail to help when mind-body approaches are working and even proven to work. But forums can be really hostile toward anyone who takes an active role in resolving their situation as opposed to just waiting around. Uh, for instance, I posted my own success story on a bunch of forums, and on one of them in particular, uh, my story was criticized as improbable uh, by a moderator. In other words, my successful experience using a mind-body approach, so rejecting protract withdrawal, acknowledging the stress, uh, my experience was invalidated. Then the moderator made some confusing comments that kind of indicated they hadn't even looked at my story, and it really muddied the waters of the thread. It became very difficult to follow. So these moderators, they have the power to dissuade people, to confuse people, to try to shut down perspectives that they don't approve of, even if these alternative approaches are helping people. I remember another person who posted on a forum who resolved protracted withdrawal sensations with brain retraining. Now, personally, I don't know that much about brain retraining, but I've heard of this working for people. And yet this person was attacked and basically forced to retract their own life experience to appease an administrator's ideology. Um, in this sense, these forums kind of remind me of psychiatry. And sometimes, although this might sound a little odd, I think these forums kind of act as an extension of psychiatric practice. I mean, what is the goal here? 
Is it to increase our knowledge base of protracted patrol sensations and what can work for people? Or is it to defend or is defending this biomedical interpretation of protracted withdrawal more important than people actually getting better? Now, kind of to the point I just made, I've noticed that withdrawal communities are subtly getting co-opted by quasi-critical psychiatrists. Uh, and these psychiatrists are increasingly now seen as like the experts on protracted withdrawal sensations and their insight is now a knowledge base on these sites. And I think in some ways this was kind of predictable. Uh, some of these forums, uh, while many people within them hate psychiatry, they also kind of seem set up as if to say, you know, look at us suffering people. Where are the psychiatrists who, who can come in and you know fix this problem or save us but psychiatrists are the ones who initiated this problem by prescribing drugs which overwhelmingly create worse outcomes for people than if they hadn't taken any drugs at all and an abundance of research shows this now and now we're supposed to think <laughs> that apparently these same psychiatrists are going to come fix the problem that they've created and continue to create by still prescribing? You know, okay. So when these psychiatrists bring their traditional biomedical model that they were trained with to protract withdrawal, well, if the only tool you have is a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. And to them, everything is a disease or a disorder or something wrong with the brain or nervous system. But quite frankly, perhaps this is all kind of a moot point. You know, it's much ado about nothing because withdrawal communities use these same biomedical models for withdrawal as these particular psychiatrists. So whether it's community survivor knowledge or quasi-critical psychiatric knowledge, I don't know if there's even much of a difference here. Now, I'm generally not against other types of professional knowledge, but when these psychiatrists set them up, set themselves up with these, I don't know, withdrawal shops and say, pay me X amount of money and I'll tell you about all about this horrible syndrome you have. Well, that kind of sounds like psychiatry as usual to me. Finally, some of the most common concerns of withdrawal forums, what even the moderators talk about, is that the forums are just a collection of the worst horror stories out there which might make us assume that this is the norm and that this is going to happen to us. Uh, some people, uh, like again, like I did, might even read about a symptom and then start to get it themselves. Or maybe read negative stories and get thrown into a wave because our stress has reached a breaking point. So there is kind of a social contagion element here as well. Another critique is the lack of success stories compared to the number of threads started by people. Uh, and this is accounted for, as many people point out, by the fact that most people leave these forums, uh, maybe because they're so awful, they just wanna get away from them, or maybe because the sensations have resolved and they never return because they understandably want to leave this whole withdrawal world behind, leave that experience behind and just move on with their lives. But I think the most significant missing information is that people are actively resolving withdrawal sensations in mind-body ways or neuroplastic ways that just go beyond the biomedical scope of the forms. So I think it's common in withdrawal communities to emphasize very long recoveries because this is what they see. But most people in these forums haven't even heard of stress-related syndromes. I mean, I use the term uh, the mind-body syndrome because that's what worked for me, but there are other framings of this as well. Yet people can be discouraged from even exploring these alternative options. So the idea that it takes X amount of time to heal, that you have, they can have like a withdrawal injury resurface years later after you heal, uh, that waves and windows are always a healing pattern, 
that ongoing hypersensitivity is always a drug injury, that powerful emotions are always withdrawal, that exercise intolerance is always withdrawal, and so on. Framing all this as a drug injury, as withdrawal, you know, all of this is based on incomplete information. It's biased information. And that's not to say that people aren't suffering, as I was, that these sensations aren't happening, that they're not reoccurring and everything like that. But there is a different way of framing it. If you are, though, interested in checking out other ways, other ways that are actually helping people to help complete their understanding of protract withdrawal sensations, then I do have a resource page on my free Substack. So feel free to look at that uh, if you wish to check it out. So those are five reasons that I left withdrawal forms behind. Um, that's what worked for me. And I will say though that some people use these forms successfully. And if they work for you, then by all means, you know, ignore me. You know, this is just my experience. I'm just a random guy on the internet. The point is, is that these forms aren't working for everyone. And although I thought they initially helped me, I think they ultimately kept me in a perceived state of withdrawal for years. <laughs> so I certainly wish I would have found uh, these alternative perspectives or took them more seriously uh, sooner than I did. Um, so again, I do have some resources for people if they want to check them out. Uh, they're in the description below. And you know, no matter what path you ultimately choose, uh, I only wish you the best. And I'll see you again uh, in the next video.